Guests and operators on your layout need a way to be able to tell one track and industry from another. So I'm going to show you how to make super quick and easy track diagrams for your fascia on Ron's Trains and Things right now. Hi, I'm Ron of Ron's Trains and Things, and if you'd like to see more model railroad tips, tools, and techniques, then be sure and subscribe down below and click that little bell icon so you can catch future videos. Well, if you have ever operated on a layout that you were not familiar with, you probably know how frustrating it can be not to know which track is which, which industry is which, and exactly where to spot or pick up the cars that are on your switch list. Well, I'm going to help you alleviate that problem today for guests and operators on your layout. Because whenever people look at a car card and they see industries or they see track names, they need to know exactly where those are. And the best way to do that is to mount a nice legible track diagram right on the fascia. So the question is, how do we make such a track diagram that it makes everything clear for our operators, but still looks really good? Well, today I'm going to show you, show you a super fast, super easy way to make those track diagrams and mount them on your fascia in a way that will look good and help all of your operators know exactly where everything is. And we're going to do it using a program that's already on your computer and you probably already know how to use. So to get started, we're going to head first over to the computer and take a look at that program and see what we can create. Take a moment to check out our sponsor, Midwest Model Railroad. They have a great line of model railroad equipment and supplies and some of the best customer service around. Their website has a real-time inventory system. They offer some of the best prices in model railroading and they ship in one business day. Check them out at MidwestModelRR.com. Link in the description. There are a lot of ways to make track diagrams for the fascia of your layout in order to help guests find their way around your layout, know where different tracks and different industries are. Uh, what I'm going to show you today is what I use, which is an incredibly simple way to, to do it. And it makes fairly simple track diagrams, but they work really, really well to get the job done. And the program I'm going to use is Microsoft Paint. Now, if, as long as you're running a PC with Microsoft Windows, uh, that you have paint on your computer. It's been part of Microsoft Windows for years and years and years. And uh, I'm running Windows 10 here, but uh, for most versions of Windows that people would be running today, you're going to find it the same way. We're going to go down here to the Start menu, bottom left of, uh, of our screen, and click that. Now, I have paint on that my quick uh, menus right here. Uh, but if you don't have it in this list, uh, then you can come over here to the scroll down menu and you're going to scroll down to the to the W's to, to Windows and you're going to see this line that says Windows Accessories. And I'm going to click that down arrow to open that menu and right here I'm going to find Microsoft Paint and one click will open it up. This is our, our basic paint program right here. And primarily what we're going to be using today is this feature right here, which is the line draw feature. Uh, I want to make sure my color is black in my case. I want just black lines on a, on a white background. And I'm going to click my, my line draw feature. And this is going to allow me to draw perfectly straight lines uh, at any angle that I want. So let's say, for example, I'm going to start here at the lower part of my uh, sheet, and I'm going to draw my main line. So I'm just going to click and hold at that button, and I can draw a line, and you see I can make this line any angle that I want and any length that I want, and I'm literally holding down the left mouse button while I'm doing this. When I let go of it, it's going to drop that line exactly where I want it. Now you can kind of notice when your line is at an angle, it's kind of pixelated. If you want a nice straight line, uh, wait for all of those pixelations and little jagged steps to go away. You got a perfectly straight line. I let go, and there's my main line right there. Now, right now, you'll notice on each end right here, there's a little white dot and a little white dot. And as long as those two dots are there, uh, I'm going to be able to manipulate that line's position. You see, as I, if I go on the line, you see how I got the little four arrows, which allow me to grab that line and drag it up and down, side to side, put it wherever I want on my sheet. I also, uh, as long as these dots are still white, uh, I also can use the arrow keys on my keyboard and move it up, down, left, right. And that allows me to, if I just want to hit the key one time at a time, 
allows me to find position that when I get it exactly where I want it, I'm gonna I'm gonna just click somewhere else on the page. You'll notice the little dots uh, just went away. I actually accidentally drug there and made a, an extra line that I didn't want to, so I'm gonna back out and get rid of that one. So let's say this is my my main line here, for example. Now, uh, okay, maybe this is uh, I've got a siding here. So the next thing I want to do is I want to draw a line uh, at an angle that that will show my turnout, and so I'm gonna just line up right on the line that I have and click and hold and pull out a short line to represent uh, a turnout and I can make that angle whatever I want uh, it can be way steeper than it would be on the actual layout because this is just a representation uh, to help people find the things that, that uh, they need to on the layout I got a little bit of, of the line down here below this line and that this just doesn't look perfect for me and then and, and that's that's okay that that happened because I want to show you how to fix that what I'm gonna do first of all is I'm gonna zoom in here just so I can see that a little better there I zoomed in really tight and then I'm gonna go up here right here you see that little eraser I'm gonna click on that eraser tab and you see the square anything that's inside the square when I click is going to be erased so if I just put that square over the part I want to erase click it once Ta-da, it is gone. Uh, now I'm going to zoom back out. And then we'll get my line draw tool again here. And I'm going to click and hold right there and make my siding. Um, and we'll make this a double-ended siding like it was a passing siding. So we'll click right there. And then one more line like so. Now I'm moving pretty quickly here. So these may not be as perfect as I would like for them to be. Uh, but I'm going to clean them up just a little bit here. We'll zoom back in and kind of scroll down a little bit to find my drawing. Get my eraser. I don't like that little piece right there, so we're going to erase that. Scroll over here. Had just a little pixel here I didn't want. I'm going to erase that. And you see, I erased too much. That's okay. See this pencil right here? I'll get this pencil. That's going to allow me to fill that back in basically one pixel at a time if I want to. There we go. Fill that in just right, and we'll zoom back out. So that's how we draw uh, the, the the tracks themselves. Then, of course, we want to be able to label these tracks so that people can see not just the diagram of the tracks, they could look at the layout and see the tracks, but we need to know what each of these tracks are. So when I'm ready to label these, uh, I'm going to go up right up here to this little A. That's my text tool. And when I click on that, it's going to allow me to draw a text box. And I'm just going to draw a, a, a box out here. It's about the size that I want, like so. And then, of course, you can choose your font. You can choose your font size. I want something large enough to read. Uh, mine, I'm just going to make black and white. Um, and then I'm going to click in my box. And I'm just going to start typing. In this case, I just want this to say main. M-A-I-N, because this is uh, the main line. Um, I want my box to be opaque. You notice if I click on transparent, the box is transparent, and all I can see is the line behind it. I'm going to click opaque because I want to be able to read my word main uh, and, and not be scored out by the by the line. Now I want a little bit of space here because it's really close to the line. It's gonna be hard to read. So I'm just gonna hit my space bar. Looks like once is gonna be enough. And then this text box doesn't need to be this big. So I'm gonna grab it here and just drag it down until it is about the size that I want. And when I'm done, I can click outside of that. And there, I've just labeled that as my main. Um, and let's say this here I, I want to refer to as track two. So again, I'm going to make a new text box. And I'm going to put it on this track. Doesn't have to be in the perfect position because we'll fix it a little bit later. I'm going to hit space once and then I'm going to type track two, or you could also call it siding, whatever you whatever you want to call it. And then I'm going to make my box the size I want. And then I, add, I want these to line up a little bit better, so I'm actually going to drag it back this way a little bit, and then drag this one back this way a little bit until they're kind of centered with each other. That looks pretty good. I click outside of there, and there we have two tracks, and, and they're labeled. And we can also uh, uh, label our industries this way. Let's say I've got an industry right here called uh, Clint Cole. That's just a name I drew out of the air. 
uh, I'll just make a text box right here where I want that to be and uh, I'm going to type the word Clint Cole um, and again I can size that box however I want I've got a name for my industry I could put a, 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 a line around that if I wanted to or, or whatever now ultimately ultimately if we kept going like that we can do any track diagram that we want and I've got a picture here of one that I've drawn previously that we're going to be working with today this is the track diagram of my north yard on my layout and uh, I drew this previously and you see it's got several industries all of the tracks are, are labeled for the classification tracks the rip tracks uh, locomotive service everything and so this one's ready to go so once we get that uh, finished in in uh, our paint program we're back over here in paint then we're going to go to to file and we're going to save as and you can choose whatever format works best for you I like to save mine as JPEG files just because I find them really easy to work with they're easy to print uh, so we'll save that as a JPEG file, give it a name, uh, and then print that out just on your regular printer that you have at, at home or, or wherever. And from there, we're ready to take that and laminate that and make it perfect, uh, permanent in order to put it on our layout. So I'm going to print out my North Yard track diagram, and then we'll go get it laminated and get it on the layout. Now that I have my track diagrams printed out and cut out to the size that I want them, I'm ready to laminate them. And for this, I am using a Blue Smart home laminator machine. This is a machine that's made to laminate materials up to uh, 11 and a half inches wide or 12 inches wide. Uh, so you can easily do eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper with this. Uh, uh, you can also do uh, larger pieces that are that are longer as well. Um, and in this case, I am using laminating pockets uh, that are 5 mil. That's considered medium weight for laminating pockets. Uh, but for this particular home laminator, uh, that is considered to be uh, really kind of the maximum that you would use, the 5 mil. Uh, and the 5 mil actually comes out just perfect for, for what I want. Now, uh, I uh, love this Blue Smart Laminator. Uh, this is a fantastic thing. If you've got any other uses for it, it's a great thing to have around your house. In, in my case, uh, my wife is a school teacher. She uses this all the time for things for school, so it's very handy for us to have for more than just model railroad purposes. Uh, if you don't have other things that you would use a laminator like this for, you can't justify the cost of it just to do this, then you can always take your uh, your pieces to uh, an office supply store like uh, uh, Office Depot or Staples. You can take it to places like uh, uh, Kinko's, uh, teacher supply stores, uh, all kinds of places like that have laminating machines where they will laminate uh, a small amount of work for you for a pretty reasonable price. Uh, but this is a great way to do it at home. So with the laminating pockets, uh, these are, uh, they fold and are connected at one end. And I'm going to take my pieces of work and I'm going to slide them into the pocket. And I want to, I, it, it works best if I push them all the way up to that end where it's connected. And you want to get them in nice and straight. Uh, it's just going to make cutting them out later easier. And also, um, I want to make sure to leave a minimum of a half an inch in between any pieces of work when I'm using multiple pieces like this inside of one laminating pouch. I want to make sure and leave a minimum of a quarter of an inch uh, on the, the sides. Uh, not, not worried about the side where it's connected, uh, but that'll help these to, to laminate together better. Now with this, uh, this sheet would should go in uh, straight like this if I wanted to put it in uh, the width wise. Uh, two problems with that. Uh, number one, uh, it'll fit like that, but if you get it just slightly crooked, it, it will catch and kink and wrinkle and it will destroy your work. Also, I just find that the lamination process works a lot better when I put the end that is connected in first. That allows it to push out any, any air bubbles or imperfections as it goes through the laminator. Now, my laminator, uh, I, I already have turned on. You see the power button here. You see the ready uh, light, which means that it should be up to temperature and ready to go. Uh, in, in our case, uh, we've found that whenever the ready light is on, I like to let it sit for another couple minutes because sometimes it's really not quite hot enough when the ready light comes on to make sure you get a really, really good uh, seal on your lamination. And then when I'm ready, I'm just going to 
feed it into the laminator and when it gets to the point where it starts to laminate the roller will take it over and it will do the job all by itself so we'll sit here and just watch it laminate there you see it coming out the other side of course you notice that the lamination pouch before it goes through the laminator is kind of opaque uh, but as it goes through the laminator and seals together comes out nice and clear and we just want to let it run all the way through the laminator all by itself. We don't want to pull on it or, or cause any disruption to it whatsoever. One of the nice things about this laminator is it comes with this nice cutter on top, which helps you to cut out your work. Uh, if it's not a full page, uh, it helps you cut out your work with nice straight lines. Now our pouch has come all the way through. It stopped so we can pull it out. And there you see we've got really nice lamination on uh, on all of our sides. It's still really hot, uh, but take just a, just a few seconds for it to cool down a little bit. I like to let it cool a little, make sure it's really well sealed before I cut it. When I go to cut these out, uh, I want to make sure and leave about a quarter of an inch of lamination uh, on all sides because whenever this laminates together, literally it's the plastic that sticks together. And so we want to make sure to leave enough plastic that, that these stay sealed together. Um, if we cut it right up to the edge of the paper, the lamination may just come right off of the paper. That's stayed there long enough at this point. I'm going to slide this up in here and get it where I want it. There we go, right about there. I'm going to hold it nice and steady and then just push this cutter down and all the way through. And... Uh, Come back again. That cut that piece off. See, we got a nice, nice straight cut there. Uh, I'm going to do the same on this side. Push down and cut. And there we go. That piece is ready to go uh, on the layout. Got to push down on that pretty good to make sure it goes all the way through. And there we are. There's my two laminated track diagrams. Now we're ready to go and get them installed on the layout. Now on my layout, since I have a double deck layout, I like to put all of the track diagrams on the fascia of the upper deck because the fascia of the lower deck is too low to read. So since I have this diagram for North Yard, North Yard is on the lower deck. I want to put this on the upper deck right here, but at the lower edge, uh, so I can see that it matches North Yard. And in this case, I'm going to mount it here towards the uh, towards the east end of North Yard because this is where most of the switching takes place. So this is where you know you're going to really need to know what track is what. And in my case, just to make things really simple, I use these little card clips uh, where I can simply clip that onto the fascia and it's there, it's ready to go. And if I ever need to change it or replace it, all I can do is take the clip off and uh, it's ready to go. Now, one of the things I didn't tell you before is uh, while I made these diagrams small just for reference on my layout on my fascia, uh, in some cases, people like to make uh, larger diagrams that they actually put toggle switches in in order to throw track power or to throw switches. You can use the same process to do exactly that, simply by uh, exploding and expanding this diagram to a larger size, uh, using a hole punch to punch holes exactly in the places where you would want the toggle switches to go, and then laminating it behind a piece of plexiglass, drilling holes through the plexiglass, and mounting your toggle switches. You can use the same process to make uh, those uh, track diagrams for, for those switches as well. So that is how, in just a short period of time, with some very simple software, you can create some nice looking track diagrams to help guests and operators know exactly where everything is on your layout. And I know many of you are going to want to give this a try. Now, if this laminator and those laminating pockets are of interest to you, I want you to know that you can find a link to them in the pics of the week down in the description down below this video. Well, if you enjoyed this video, I've got more videos about some great projects that you can do on your computer for making decals and other great items for your model railroad layout. And you'll find them in the playlist in the corner of your screen right now. 
Well, before you go, be sure and check out the description down below where you'll find my Amazon page, those picks of the week that I just mentioned, as well as tons of other great links that I know that you will enjoy. Well, if you'd like to see some more Model Railroad content right now, check out the links on your screen. And be sure and join me each Tuesday as I bring you even more great Model Railroad videos. And I look forward to seeing you then. 10, Lizzie?